All right, guys, I'm going to try to make a video that kind of goes over my process of how I like to get started when I poured a set of cylinder heads. Um, the first thing and most, I think it's the easiest place to start is if you start working on your exhaust ports. Um, again, I've talked about before not opening your exhaust port opening larger than the manifold or the header that you're going to use and how important that is but what i like to do especially on these 243 heads is just raise the roof a little bit so what i'll do is i'll take dike them and then yes if you don't have a bunch of you know if you don't have the access to buy the dike them or whatever you know you're more than welcome to just color this in real dark with black or whatever colored sharpie then what you want to do is take one of your exhaust gaskets and be aware just in case you're not familiar with the ls's they'll tell you which side should go down and it'll tell you which side faces your exhaust manifold so what you'll do is take this gasket and i got lucky because this one's got a broken imagine an LS head with a broken exhaust bolt. Tell me it isn't so. So what I'll do is I will start lining this thing up. And generally I will use several bolts to hold this thing down when I'm gonna try to scribe it. Because I wanna get everything as centered on the bolt holes as possible. And yes, I, the reason I brought up the fact that these gaskets have a position that faces down towards manifold because if you put these on wrong or try to you could ruin a cylinder head by porting it the wrong direction that would be bad so basically what i want to try to do here is position this thing snug it down and then uh, scribe where i'm going to do my porting work It's powerful. Gotta be careful. We're not trying to break anything. It doesn't have a very good clutch on it. Boop. Anyway, you just want to get this thing where it won't slide around when you take your. I just use a sharpened uh, implement to just put a small scratch. Just push hard enough to take the dicum or the uh, Sharpie off because it's really kind of annoying when you put real deep scratches in there as a reference point, but then don't port to that scratch. That thing's kind of on there forever. Looks kind of bad. So let me get a scribe so I can show you what we're doing here. All right, I went ahead and took the opportunity to sharpen my scribe. Basically, it's from Harbor Freight. I'm pretty sure that's where I bought this thing and just sharpen it like you would a tungsten for a, a TIG welder to a sharp point. And then what you want to do is make sure, you know, look through all your holes, make sure you're where you want to be. Now we never, I don't work the floor of these ports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just above the floor and just put a little scratch you know, nothing major, just a little scratch around this port so that I can identify how wide I would want to go to stay, you know, reasonable. What I call reasonable is you don't want to just hog this thing all the way out to this gasket. Reason being is this ceiling exhaust manifold gasket is quite a bit bigger than the majority of, well, it's for sure bigger than the stock exhaust manifolds that you can bolt on, but it's, I've never seen a header match these things perfectly without doing a little cleanup on them myself. So what I like to try to do, and I'll show you on the head that's on the floor here in just a second, is I will raise this roof until it's about I would say an eighth of an inch from this inside uh, 
reference mark because I'm not really wanting to go all the way to the roof because I, I don't want this port to gain lose all that velocity by running in to the exhaust manifold or header just as it's at its peaks, you know, because your exhaust gas is going to come out superheated and hot, so it's going to follow the roof of the port is going to be its fastest point of uh, escape. You don't want it running right into your exhaust manifold and flipping around and messing up the rest of the exhaust flow. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So let me get these scribed real, real quick and I'll pull this gasket off so I can show you what the scribed head looks like. Okay guys, you can see clearly the scribe mark from our uh, gasket, right? So, I mean, if you knew 100% sure that your exhaust manifold or header was gonna be completely open to this line, you could raise that roof this whole distance. Because you'll notice on these 243 heads, the factory's done a really good job at what I call rough casting this port with its D shape, they did a good job side to side. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm gonna clean it up and make these walls straight so that they don't bell. See how, it, you can't really see it, but it starts deeper and then bell, it pulls in and doesn't need to be there. So what my job is gonna be is to just flatten this port on the sides out to the scribe mark then I'm going to raise the roof. Probably, I'll be able to show you better on that other head to about, probably about this area. Got a uh, device I use to measure the distance from the floor to the roof. And once I can fit my uh, measuring device in there, that's as high as I raise the roof. What I'll do is do, uh, It's people make fun of me for saying this, but I call it my line of sight floor. I try to flatten this roof and look through the um, valve opening and you can, visual, you can visualize the path that that air is gonna take following that roof. Remember what we talked about, that air is gonna be superheated and hot, trying to get out of there as fast as it can so it's going to you know follow the roof that you know less turn you know making it turn less is going to maintain its velocity better and that you know raised roof which is not a ton will pick up some flow numbers and then of course we always work our guide you know but everybody does guide boss work so that's no big deal but i just wanted to get you guys to see how easy it is to get your reference line on these heads for the gasket matching is what I'm gonna call it process. All right, here we go. Got her set up over here under the brighter light. All right, so here's my, my snap gauge that I use because just through experience and porting, I have determined that with the factory floor, I like to raise this roof to wear a one inch 250 thousandths because you can set these snap gauges whatever you want and they come in a multiple pack that has different size ranges and as you'll see I can't quite I can almost get it in there it's not quite in like I can hook one side but I can't really get the other one to go in that's my rough cut I come in and get it where I can almost get the one inch 250 thousandths in there. That gives me a little bit of material to work with the smoothing process, the blending, when I'm coming out of these walls into the roof. You know what I mean? I've got a little wiggle room on how much material I can continue to remove out of the roof while I'm working the port, doing the finishing with the sanding rolls, whatnot, whatnot. That way I can keep, you know, keep some, some consistency in how big I'm making 
each port you know if you wanted to I mean generally I just use this outer scribe line you know just try to come right up on the inside of that scribe line on my walls but if you wanted to you could also set a, a snap gauge to the width you want to make sure you stay you know consistent that's not a problem um, but I wanted to show you generally how I start on a set of heads and I think I do it because it's probably the easiest portion of the head to port and um, it makes you feel like you're getting you're, you're getting work done it makes you feel like you're getting somewhere and you got a sense of accomplishment something that they used to always talk about in porting videos and porting classes and just you know the old guys they always stressed do one operation to both heads like if you're going to do your raise your roof on your heads do your you know do your dicum do your scribe raise your roof do each process to each to both cylinder heads at the same time don't just like do this head completely then go over and start doing the other head okay their philosophy or, or rule of thumb was that you're going to end up with a much more consistently ported head port to port and head to head if you'll do each procedure across both cylinder heads at the same time and if you think about it it, it makes a lot of logical sense that you're going to have more consistency and you're going to build up your technique by doing one one process or one procedure to both heads then move on to the next you know process so basically i just wanted to make this part one video where i was showing how i scribed the exhaust ports talk about my logic and porting theory on raising the roof flattening out the you know the walls and then blending it back into the port so um I know people have been asking about a like a step-by-step -step guide to porting so I thought I'd make some kind of a video that kind of outlines my mindset and how I try to do these cylinder heads so I have uh, more consistency in the end product if you guys have any questions hit me up in the comments um, I appreciate it if you'd like subscribe share uh, YouTube's going through all kinds of different algorithms so you know I don't know whatever they ask you to do hit the little bell uh, I appreciate it if you would that way we can get some more views and maybe make a little bit more income and be able to do more heads who knows or one day god forbid I might get my blazer done you never know anyway <laughs> thanks for watching please like subscribe and share